I'd like to do uh, a demonstration that we call the pink catalyst. Um, this is a very good demonstration to focus specifically on the activity of the catalyst and what the catalyst does, because we're really going to see the properties of the catalyst here up close. So what I have here first is a solution of potassium sodium tartrate. That's an organic compound. Um, it's a naturally occurring compound. It's in cream of tartar and other things. And I need to heat that up to about 70 degrees. Now, I've preheated it here a little bit, um, but I need to get it a little bit hotter. What I'm going to do is react that with hydrogen peroxide. Now, you might think that hydrogen peroxide is a very strong oxidizing agent. It ought to be able to do this reaction all by itself but that's not the case here. What we need in order for this reaction to occur is a catalyst. And the catalyst that we're going to use is called cobalt chloride. It's my favorite color. It's pink. And the cobalt chloride is going to catalyze the oxidation of the tartaric acid by the hydrogen peroxide. And I need to preheat that to about 70 degrees, and I am exactly at 70 degrees, 69.9. I'm going to turn that down now so that I don't get too much hotter than that. I'm going to go ahead and add the catalyst. Now, I just have the tartaric acid in there, and I have a pink solution. But still, nothing is happening. Okay, And that's because I do need the other reactant, and I need about 40 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. And this is 6% hydrogen peroxide. And I've got about 40 milliliters. And what I want to see is what happens. Notice that right now, there's nothing going on. It's at about 70 degrees. It's gone down to about 68. I'm going to take the thermometer out so that we can focus on the reaction. After we see the reaction, then we'll go ahead and explain it. So let's go ahead and add the hydrogen peroxide. Immediately a color change to kind of a peachy color, a little bit of a brownish color now. We're getting some color changes. And a tiny bit of gas being produced, not quite yet. Uh-oh, there it goes, though. And now we can see quite a bit of gas being produced. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off now. A lot of gas there. The color is changing again now, too. It's kind of that brownish green. Now it's getting more of a green color, kind of an olive brown color. Getting brighter green now, though, a, a real nice Kelly green. You can see quite a lot of effervescence in that chemical reaction. We'll be able to talk about what has actually happened. Oh, a bright Kelly green there, a lot of gas being produced. And remember, this is called the pink catalyst, so we want to focus on what the catalyst does. So, uh-oh, the bubbling subsided, and it's gone back to pink. A little bit of bubbling. So we had a color change, but that color change was reversible, right? Because we started out pink, we ended pink. When the reaction was really vigorous, we had a lot of gas bubbles being produced. It was bright green, although it took a while to get to that bright green. That reaction is over, so I'm going to go ahead and put that down here on this hot pad and just let it go back to room temperature. Now let's go to the board and at least explain the chemical reaction a little bit here in terms of what the catalyst does and the role of it. Hydrogen peroxide is, of course, H2O2. We add potassium sodium tartrate. And I'm going to write the chemical formula structure for that, almost as if we were in organic class, just so that you can kind of see it in its... Okay. Basically, we have four carbon atoms. We have two CO2 minus groups here at the end, CO2 minus here, CO2 minus tartaric acid is a diacid. Potassium sodium tartrate is cream of tartar, basically, or Rochelle salt. And we have two OH groups on that, hydrogen peroxide. And we also added some cobalt, 
chloride, which contains the cobalt-2 cation. Now the overall reaction is H2O2 plus the tartaric acid. What happens is it oxidizes this. It does a reaction that actually occurs, uh, is a similar reaction to one that occurs in our bodies. It's called oxidative decarboxylation. That's a long word, but what it means is you decarboxylate. So the main product that we saw a lot of was CO2 gas. Both of those CO2 groups, even though here they're minus charges, end up as CO2 gas that's liberated. That was that effervescence that we got. So that was the main product. There's also some bicarbonate, or not bicarbonate, but rather formate ions that are produced, and you get two of those. That's the overall reaction, plus probably some water. But what I want to focus on is, we said, the role of the catalyst. This is pink. It was pink when we started. It was pink when we ended. The a definition of a catalyst is something that accelerates the rate of a chemical reaction. It participates in the reaction pathway, but is not itself consumed or used up so that presumably the catalyst is the, is the same before and after. So that pink color was the original color, it was the final color. What was the intermediate color? Well, it went through a series of color changes, but at the, and at the end, it, 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 excuse me, when the reaction was most vigorous, it was a bright Kelly green. And that is probably a cobalt-3 complex ion. So what happens is, at first, the hydrogen peroxide actually oxidizes the cobalt-2 to cobalt-3, and that forms a complex with the tartrate ion, okay? So the cobalt-3 complexes with the tartrate ion, that's a bright green, and then that decomposes further by oxidation to give CO2 and formate ions. So, and then once the reaction is complete, then that complex, the, all the tartrate ions have been reacted now. The cobalt-3 is then reduced back down to the cobalt-2. And that shows the effect of a catalyst. A little bit of complicated chemistry here, but not that much if you take the time to kind of break it down. And you know, even though this formula may look a little intimidating at times, I think it's important for students to know that chemistry isn't just, you know, hydrogen and chlorine and sodium and iodine and things like that. I mean, organic chemistry is very interesting. There's actually some biochemistry here that's related to, like I said, the decarboxylation in terms of how the cells get energy and so on. So uh, a, a nice reaction, some interesting chemistry, some pretty color changes, and that's the pink catalyst that shows that sometimes even the strong and mighty like hydrogen peroxide need a little bit of help from their friends, in this case the cobalt catalyst.